Hello everybody, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. Thank you so much for being here. I am very excited to watch Star Trek VI, the undiscovered country that seems very Star Trek-y, you know, to go where no man's gone before. Apparently, it is a general rule that the odd numbered OG Star Treks are so-so and the even number Star Treks are amazing. So, we are on an even number. Five was not the worst movie ever made, like some people said, but definitely my least favorite so far. It wasn't that bad. It's It still feels like hanging out with the crew. So, you know, just, just a weird adventure. Sometimes those happen, we've all been there. So this one, I'm really excited for. This is the last with the original cast, which makes me a little sad. I know that some of you are like, you don't even know them because you didn't watch all the episodes and that's true. But I really feel like I have come to in these six movies and even the episodes I watched before. I do think that I will go back and watch even more episodes when I miss these guys. Okay, so here we go, number six. Next, I'm planning on watching some The Next Generation episodes, still deciding how many and which ones, and then we'll go on to those movies, and then the newer movies with Chris Pine that I'm also really excited about. So much to look forward to, I love it. Okay, so here's my Patreon. If you wanna help me pick the Next Generation episodes to watch and stuff like that, there's my Patreon. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell. Here we go. I must warn you guys that I am a little under the weather. This might be why I sound weird or look tired. <laughs> Kim Cattrall! The Kim Cattrall from Sex and the City? Samantha? Christopher Plummer? I just saw him in um, the lake house. Don't you feel like Leonard Nimoy could could be his like, like Spock is his Vulcan name and Leonard Nimoy is his human name. Like he looks like Leonard Nimoy. I guess that's cause that <laughs> is who he is, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Stardate 9521.6, Hikaru Sulu commanding. Commander Sulu. We're heading home under full impulse power. I'm pleased to report that ship and crew have functioned well. According to this sector. <laughs> Shower? They should wear seatbelts. Don't tell me that was any meteor shower. Negative, sir. Subspace shockwave originated at bearing 323 mark 75. It's Praxis, sir. It's a Klingon moon. Praxis is their key energy production facility. This is Excelsior, a Federation starship. We have monitored a large explosion in your sector. Do you require assistance? I've confirmed the location of Praxis, but I cannot confirm the existence of Praxis. Praxis? Captain, I'm getting a message from Praxis. This is Radio Colonel speaking. The High Command. There has been an incident on Praxis. Everything is under control. You only have a quarter of a planet. Do we report this, sir? Yes, we Are you kidding? What are we doing here? Maybe they're throwing us a retirement party. Look at these silver me. foxes. I just, I just bought a boat. This briefing is classified. The CNC. As you were. The Klingon Empire has roughly 50 years of life left to it. For full details, I'm turning this briefing over to the Federation Special Envoy. Good morning. Good morning. Two months ago, a Federation starship monitored an explosion on the Klingon moon Praxis. The moon's decimation means the deadly pollution of their ozone. They will have depleted their supply of oxygen in approximately 50 Earth years. Last month, at the behest of the Vulcan ambassador, I opened a dialogue with Gorkin, Chancellor of the Klingon High Council, he poses to commence negotiations at once. Negotiations for what? The dismantling of our space stations and star bases along the neutral zone. Are we talking about mothballing the Starfleet? What? 
To offer Klingons safe haven within Federation space is suicide. Klingons would become the alien trash of the galaxy. And if we dismantle the fleet, the opportunity here is to bring them to their knees. Then we'll be in a far better position. Klingons have never been trustworthy. I'm forced to agree with Admiral Cartwright. It is imperative that we act now to support the Gorkin Initiative. You, Captain Kirk, are to be our first olive branch. The Klingons hate Kirk. Me? They'll think twice about attacking the Enterprise under your command. I have personally vouched for you in this matter, Captain. Have personally vouched? You will extend Chancellor Gorka full diplomatic courtesy. But a full ambassador would be better equipped. If there's no further business, I wish you and your crew Godspeed. This seemed a little quick. I don't know whether to congratulate you or not. I wouldn't. Uh-oh. There is an old Vulcan proverb. Only Nixon could go to China. My father requested that I open the ghost. I know your father's the Vulcan ambassador, for heaven's sake. Do you know how I feel about them? They're animals, Jim. There is an historic opportunity. Don't believe them. Don't trust them. They are dying. Let them die. Ooh. Has it occurred to you that this crew is due to stand down in three months? We've done our bit for king and country. You should have trusted me. Oh. Well, this is tough. SD-103. Look at that. Captain on the bridge. As you were, Lieutenant. Valeris, sir. We were told that you needed a helmsman, so I volunteered. Samantha. The lieutenant was the first Vulcan to be graduated at the top of her class. You must be very proud. I don't believe so, sir. She's a Vulcan, all right. <laughs> I would never Hi, have imagined Samantha as a Vulcan on Star Trek. Captain, may I remind you that regulations specify thrusters only while in space dock? <clears throat> you heard the order, Lieutenant. Aye, sir. Scotty! I've never trusted Klingons, and I never will. Oh, I got it. I can never forgive them for the death of my boy. Spock says this could be an historic occasion. But how on earth can history get past people like me? Hmm. Sorry. You could have not. We are almost at the rendezvous, sir. Permission to speak freely, sir. It is an honor to serve with you. You piloted well out of the space dock, Lieutenant. I've always wanted to try that, sir. You've done well, Valeris. I've followed your career with satisfaction. Ooh. You've exceeded my expectations. Is this romantic? I do not understand this representation. Fiction from ancient Earth mythology, expulsion from paradise. Why keep it in your quarters? It's a reminder to me that all things end. It is of endings to speak. Sir, I address you as a kindred intellect. Do you not recognize that a turning point has been reached in the affairs of the Federation? The universe will unfold as it should. This will be my final voyage on board this vessel as a member of her crew. Nature abhors a vacuum. I intend you to replace me. I could only succeed you, sir. All officers to the bridge. Cling on battle off the port bow. Did I see sparks? Or is that too Professor Student-esque? Right standard rudder. Bring us alongside. This is the Starship Enterprise. Captain James T. Kirk. This is Kronos One. I am Chancellor Gorkon. Chancellor, we've been ordered to escort you through Federation space to your meeting on Earth. Would you and your party care to dine this evening as guests of the United Federation of Planets? We would be delighted to accept your gracious invitation. We'll make arrangements to have you beamed aboard at 1930 hours. That all seemed a little passy aggressive. They're like, I would be delighted. <laughs> Guess who's coming to dinner? It's a movie. I almost watched it. Ooh. Things seem tense. He seems like a delight. This is my daughter, Azed Boer. My military advisor, Brigadier Kurla. And this is General Chang, my chief of staff. So, wanted to meet you, Captain. I'm not sure how to take that. Sincere admiration. Uh, this way. I think you might enjoy Awkward. it. Awkward. Oh. Romulan ale. I offer a toast. The undiscovered country. The future. The undiscovered country. Captain Kirk, I thought Romulan ale was illegal. One of the advantages of being a thousand light years from Federation. Tell me, Captain Kirk, would you be willing to give up Starfleet? The captain feels that Starfleet's mission has always been one of peace. 
far be it for me to dispute my first officer. In space, all warriors are cold warriors. Human rights, by the very name, is racist. Federation is no more than a homo sapiens only club. In any case, we know where this is leading. Wait. The annihilation of our culture. To be or not to be. That is the question which preoccupies our people, Captain Kirk. So they're scared that they're going to lose their culture and way. Well, I see we have a long way to go. We must do this again sometime. You don't trust me, do you? I don't blame you. If there is to be a brave new world, a generation is going to have the hardest time living in it. Have we not heard the chimes at midnight? Ooh, don't like that ponytail. Um, that guy, that guy seems uh, a wee bit fishy. The Enterprise goes to Chancellor Gorkin and company to a note to the galley, Romulan ale no longer to be served at diplomatic functions. <laughs> Spock, I'm really tired. We are reading an enormous amount of neutron radiation. What does that mean? Strangely enough, it appears to be emanating from us. Enterprise? You know anything about a radiation surge? Sir? One more. What? You can't do that. You have fired on the Chancellor's ship. Who fired? Uhura monitor. I sir. Direct hit. Confirmed, sir. What did he do? What? Who's firing? Stopped. And did we fire those torpedoes? Negative, Captain. According to inventory, we're still fully loaded. What is happening? I'm confused. They need to know it wasn't them. Oh, oh gosh. Are these are are these? Oh boy. She is the least. She's spinning out of control. I know it's the guy with the eye patch, isn't it? And you blatantly defile that piece. See it. And for that, it'll blow you out of the stars. We haven't fired. Captain, according to our data banks, we have. They're coming about. Shields up. They're preparing to fire. Captain, our shields. Shields up, Captain. Signal our surrender. Captain? We surrender. This is Enterprise. They fired it. We surrender. Oh, boy. I'm going aboard. Spock, you have the call. I'm responsible for involving you in this. I will go. No, I'll go. I'm going too. They may need a doctor. Have you lost your mind? I give you my word, I don't understand what has happened. We're here to help. Ropia! Who were those spaceman guys? I need them to believe them. Kirk is a man of integrity. He would not have done this. Chancellor Gorka. God. And two of yours, Starfleet crew, beamed aboard wearing magnetic boots and did this. Aren't you carrying a surgeon? Well, until this disgrace. Well, then, for God's sakes, man, let me help. Sweet Jesus. Jim, I don't even know his anatomy. His wounds are not closing. He's oh, killing us! Come on, damn it! He's not responding. Don't let it end this way. Oh. Under Article Number 184 of your interstellar law, I'm placing you under arrest. We're charged with assassinating. We've got to do something. I assume command of this ship. Please notify Starfleet headquarters. Tell them precisely what has taken place and request instructions. We will be able to follow the captain's movements. How did you achieve this, sir? Time is precious, Lieutenant. We must endeavor to piece together what happened here tonight. According to our data bank, this ship fired those torpedoes. No way! We need evidence. Evidence! While he traveled to see you under a flag of truce on a mission of peace. None of these facts are in dispute, Mr. President. I have ordered a full-scale investigation. In the meantime. In the meantime. 
We expect the Federation to abide by the Articles of Interstellar Law. Kirk and Dr. McCoy will stand trial for the assassination. Easy, easy. I can't possibly believe that James Kirk assassinated the Chancellor of the High Council. This Cleon president is on Kirk's side. I want to assure you that this shameful deed will Mr. not... Mr. President, let us come to the point. You want this conference to go forward, and so did my father. I will attend in one week. On one condition. We will not extradite the prisoners, and you will make no attempt to rescue them in a military operation. Your father was killed for what he wanted. The peace process will go forward. I understand it, what it looks like. Look, we'll pay for my father's death. Who were the spacemen? Uh oh, spaghetti. This is bad. Uh, Mr. Spock, we need answers. Dear heavens. Enterprise fired on Kronos One without provocation. He's he's the. Call your first witness. Who's who's Kirk's lawyer? The two Starfleet crewmen came walking towards me. Or perhaps they merely wore Starfleet uniforms. Yes. How could these men be walking? They appeared to be wearing magnetic boots. What is your current medical status? Aside from a touch of arthritis, I'd say pretty good. He thinks I'm funny. <laughs> I believe that you consumed rather generous amount of Romulan ale. Objection! Dang. We all did. Was Chancellor Gorkum alive when you first examined him? Barely. I didn't have the medical knowledge I needed for Klingon anatomy. Objection! I was nervous. No, you were incompetent. <gasps> He's the best doctor the Enterprise has ever seen. James Tiberius. Tiberius. I did not know that's what the T was. Tell us that you plan to take revenge for the death of your son. Captain Kirk has not been identified as the assassin. From the captain's personal log. I've never trusted Klingon. And I never will. I've never been able to forgive him for the death of my boy. Okay. Okay. That doesn't mean he killed them. Those words were spoken by me. My client's political views are not on trial. On the contrary! Captain Kirk's views and motives are indeed at the very heart of the matter. This officer's record shows him to be insubordinate, unprincipled, career-minded, opportunist. Okay. Do you deny being demoted for these charges? Don't wait for the translation! Answer me now! I cannot deny it. You were demoted? Yes. For insubordination? Receiving his on occasion. brother. I didn't know about the assassination until we boarded the ship. You still deny the Enterprise fired on Cronus One? For honors, please. And you still deny your men beamed aboard and shot the Chancellor? I cannot confirm or deny actions I did not witness. Captain Kirk. Oh my gosh. But as the captain of a starship, you are required to be responsible for the actions of your men. I am. And if it should be proved that members of your crew did, in fact, carry out such an assassination. Your honors. Do not answer. Captain Kirk, you will answer the question. This is a not a fair trial. I am responsible for the conduct of the crew under my command. Your honors, the state rests. Final statements? It is the determination of this court that the prisoners are guilty as charged. We have no evidence! What is this court? That the evidence against my clients is entirely circumstantial. In the interest of fostering amity for the forthcoming peace talks, the sentence of death is commuted. What does that mean? Without possibility of reprieve or parole, you'll be taken from this place. Dilithium mines on the penal asteroid Rurapente. The rest of your natural life. Oh no. The alien's graveyard. Better to kill them now and get it over with. This all happened way too fast without any investigation. Where are the sheriffs? Where are the detectives? We have to figure out how this happened. Oh. We fired. All weapons visually accounted for. An ancestor of mine maintained that if you eliminate the impossible, Whatever remains, however improbable, must be the truth. It means that if we cannot have fired those torpedoes, someone else did. Yes. There was an enormous neutron energy surge. Not from us. Neutron surge that be could only be produced by another ship. If there were a ship beneath us, the Klingons would have seen her. Not unless they were camoed, shielded, 
invisible. A bird of prey. Bird of prey. But I thought they can't fire when they're invisible. Unless. However, things are not equal. This one can. We must inform Starfleet Command. Inform them yes. of what? They'll say that we're so desperate to exonerate the captain that we'll say anything. They would be correct. We have no evidence. Okay, let's find evidence. The ship will be searched from bow to stern. Lieutenant Valerius, you'll be in charge. If there was a ship underneath us, surely the assassins beamed aboard from that vessel. You're forgetting something, Mr. Chekhov. We did. The killers are here. If we did not, whoever altered the databanks is here. What we are looking for is here. What are we looking for, sir? Traitors. Two pairs of gravity boots. I have this sneaking suspicion that it might be Valerius. Because she's like, don't she like was talking to like, don't you see the end is near? Like, and then she acted weird when she was talking to those guys. Like, don't you have work to do? I don't know. The minds of Mordo. This is the Gulag Rurapente. There is no stockade. Punishment means exile from prison to the surface. Nothing can survive. OMG. How has this happened? Oh, oh my god. Universal translator has been confiscated. I'm sorry. Definitely on about something, Jim. He wants your obedience to the Brotherhood of Aliens. He's got it. And your coat. It wouldn't fit. Crandock, Arenty. Crandock! This will help keep you warm. Amartya, you're Kirk and McCoy, I presume. How do you know that? We don't get many presidential assassins. We didn't kill Gorkin. But there is a reward for your death. That figures. You've been set up all along. Somebody up there wants you out of the way. Surely they have disposed of these boots by now. Why not simply leave? Vaporize them. Like this? <laughs> no one can fire an unauthorized phaser aboard a starship. OK. If my surmise is correct, those boots will cling to the killer's necks like a pair of Tiberian bats. Huh? They won't make their escape without them, nor can they simply throw them out the window. If we return to space dock, the assassins will surely find a way to dispose of their incriminating footwear, and we will never see the captain or Dr. McCoy alive. Could take weeks, sir. Thank you, Mr. Scott. <laughs> if I know the captain, by this time, he is deep into planning his escape. <laughs> Jim! McCoy? <gasps> is that the guard laughing? How did we get here? All right, Jim. I think so. They'll respect you now. I was lucky that thing had knees. That was not his knee. <laughs> when whoever it is makes their move, you won't be here to ask if he's the one. Do you want to get out of here? Yes, we do, sexy alien. Are you afraid of the future? I believe that was a general idea that I was trying to convey. Some people are afraid of what might happen. I was terrified. What terrified you specifically? No more neutral zone. I was used to hating Klingons. It never even occurred to me to take Gorkin at his word. Spock was right. You've got any bright ideas, now's the time. Time's the problem. Whoever killed Gorkin is bound to attempt another assassination. Of his daughter. Kirk, it's me, Martia. No one has ever escaped from Bura Pente. Except us. I know how to get outside the shield. I can't make it alone. And you're likeliest candidate to come in this hellhole for months. Candidate for what? Trust her. Bones watching? Oh. What is it with you anyway? Still think we're finished? More than ever. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, they're refusing to acknowledge signal to return to space docks. We have no idea, Location Enterprise. Sir? You have hearing problems, mister. Sulu. Thanks, pal. Klingons bleed purple. This is the first evidence which corroborates our theory. Now we go to Starfleet. Now we expand our search to include uniforms. But they were wearing spacesuits. Yeah, but the people sir, could sir. be. Oak? Who's Oak? I 
think we've been had. No, you weren't, Doctor. Get off at the first level. Follow the gang into the mine. They don't take girls. She's in disguise? You are crewman Dax? Yes, Commander. What is the problem? Perhaps you know Russian epic of Cinderella. If shoe fits, wear it. Mr. Chekhov. Watch me. What kind of creature is this? Last night, you two. Don't remind me. She can shapeshift or it's a costume? I do, IDK. Oh, come on, we don't have a lot of time. But don't they still have their thingies on? So once they get up there, how's he gonna beam anybody? Stay close. Is she just doing this all to kill them? There they are. They're emerging from the beaming shield. Chekhov set course for Urpente. We had to discover. But correct, Mr. Chekhov. Acquired now as a feat of linguistic ledger domain and a degree of intrepidity. Come again? Leave me. I'm finished. No! I'm wearing a Viridian patch on my back. Box slapped it there just before we went on Gorkin's ship. By that cunning little Vulcan. They'll be able to locate us two sectors away. If they're even looking for us. Of course they are. Dujvets Onuk. Dujvets Onuk. Lean. We must respond personally. A universal translator would be recognized. Come on, guys. What do they say? No one learned to speak Klingon? We is condemning food. <laughs> <laughs> what is your true form, sexy lady? I'm a Kamaloid. I thought you were a mythic. Give a girl a chance, Captain. We're outside the shield. Now it's your turn, Captain. If you say so. Are you crazy? Don't tell me that flare is standard. Prison issue. It's to let them know where we are. An accident wasn't good enough. Good enough for one. Two would have looked suspicious. Kill one. Tempting escape. Now that's convincing for both. Surprise! She wouldn't. Friends are late. They'll be along. Oh my gosh. Can't believe I kissed you. Must have been your lifelong ambition. Oh my gosh, he's not gonna know which one is which. Well, well. Oh boy. What took you so long? Kill him, he's the one. Him! No witnesses. Damn clever, if you ask me. That's what he wanted. Who? Who wanted us killed? Why not tell you? His name is... No, not... <laughs> Couldn't you have waited two seconds? Captain, you want to go back? Absolutely not. Oh, I was so scared they were going to beam up the wrong guy. Who? I knew it! I knew it! You evil pirate! This one is good. Klingons have a new weapon. A bird of prey that can fire when cloaked. Reason to believe that Gorkhan's murderers are aboard this vessel. I found the missing uniforms with the Klingon blood on them! <gasps> Face your own stun at close range. First rule of assassination. Kill the assassin. Oh, we're back to square one. Wonder why they weren't vaporized. What set off the alarm? They're making it look like those two guys are alive still, and then they're the they're all gonna the real people are gonna freak out. They're also making it look like they're alive and they're coming to kill them again. You have to shoot. If you are logical, you have to shoot. 
I do not want to. I just assume you didn't. The operation is over. You were his star student. My personal log was used against me. How long did you wait outside my quarters, Lee? I tried to tell you, but you would not listen. There were things I tried to tell you about having faith. Klingons cannot be trusted. You said so yourself. They killed your son. Did you not wish Gorkon dead? Let them die, you said. Did I misinterpret you? They conspired with us to assassinate their own chancellor. How trustworthy can they be? Klingons and Horatian members conspiring together was us. Everyone who stands to lose from peace. My comrades will make certain all your ship-to-shore transmissions are jammed. Names, Lieutenant. I do not remember. You're under arrest, lady. A lie? A choice. Please forget about this handy little power. Cartwright from Starfleet? Admiral Cartwright. Who else? General Shang, Ambassador. Nicholas. Where is the peace conference? <gasps> what happened? She does not know. Contact Excelsior. She'll have the coordinates. I've already got him, sir. Standing by, Captain Kirk. You realize that by even talking to her, violating regulations. Her message is breaking up. Bless you, sir. Where is the peace conference? Camp Kittle, near the Romulan border. We gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. The chances of our reaching the conference in time are slim. When does this conference start? According to my information, today. Thank you, Captain Sulu. Don't mention it, Captain Kirk. It was. Arrogant presumption on my part that got us into this. You and the doctor might have been killed. The night is young. <laughs> you said it yourself. It was logical. You're a great one for logic. So the Federation guy that spoke up at the beginning, he was working with a Romulan guy and the eye patch guy and the lady. I couldn't get past the death of my son. I was prejudiced. Accomplishments as a Balkan. Gorkin had to die before I understood how prejudiced I was. Is it possible? That we too, you and I, have grown so old and so inflexible that we have outlived our usefulness. Did that constitute a joke? <laughs> for yourself, it wasn't your fault. I was responsible. Human beings. But, Captain, we both know that I am not human. You're part human. Everybody's human. And that remark, insulting. The United Federation of Planets welcomes you to Camp Pitum. out here somewhere yes she is and all we have is a neutron radiation surge and by the time we're close enough to record it we're ashes we should just drive and shoot at the same time then if they're close to us they'll just automatically get it let us redefine progress to mean that just because we can do a thing who is that guy with the mustache uhura uhura nothing captain if she's here she's rigged for a silent running i can see you kirk chang can you see me? No peace in our time. Once more unto the breach. Oh boy, shields up! <laughs> they really do need seatbelts, guys! Back off, back off! What's she waiting for? Probably attempting to ascertain why we are reversing. Shoot! For fun! Incoming! Shields up! Come on, come on. To fly apart. Fly apart then. There were those who said he was an idealist. Others said he had no choice. Oh boy. He's very sweaty. Guilt. <laughs> Do something! Fire into space! Well, what about all of that equipment we're carrying to catalog gaseous anomalies? Well, the thing's gotta have a tailpipe. Would you care to assist me in performing surgery on a torpedo? Fascinating. Faster, faster, faster! Phase one, preparation for evacuation. Okay, where's our shields? Shields, we We have shields and it's still doing that? All right, now we've given them something else to shoot at. Aye, sir. Sulu, you beautiful man. Okay, here we go. Dear heavens! Where's my torpedo? Bet you wish you'd stood in bed. Key, please, Doctor. Time is short. No! Stop it! We've got a heartbeat. Clear. Walk it alone. Fire. Fire. 
Someone's gonna kill the president, though. To be. We see not. you. To be. What about the president who's supposed to be assassinated, though? To implement the Stop! Out of the way! Out of the way! Mr. President! Oh. Arrest those men! Arrest yourself! Oh, we've got a full confession. <laughs> What's the meaning of all of this? Oh, let me tell you. It's about the future, Madam Chancellor. Some people think the future means the end of history. We haven't run out of history quite yet. Your father called the future the undiscovered country. People can be very frightened of change. You've restored my father's faith. And you've restored my son's. A full body goosebump. Slow clap. Space peace, everybody. World peace. <laughs> Once again, we've saved civilization. <laughs> Captain Kirk. Captain Sulu. As much to the crew of the Enterprise. Nice to see you in action one more time, Captain Kirk. This is goodbye. I think it's about time we got underway ourselves. So. I have orders from Starfleet Command to be decommissioned. If I were human, I believe my response would be go to hell. Course heading, Captain. Where are we going? Second star to the right. And straight on till morning. Captain's log, star date 9529.1. This is the final cruise of the Starship Enterprise under my command. This ship. And her history. Oh, my guys. They will continue the voyage as we have begun and journey to all the undiscovered countries, boldly going where no man, where no one has gone before. This music's so good. ready to say goodbye. That was a really good send off though. A really good ending. I love that movie. That might have been my favorite so far, but I also love two and four. You guys were right, even numbers. Always liked even numbers better than odd numbers anyways. The character arcs and the stories and the character development was so good and I felt so connected to the characters, which doesn't always happen. And maybe it's because I've watched six of the movies and that happens, but I just really liked them. <laughs> they felt like my friends, just like on Firefly, kind of. I, I have those same feelings. That one was intense. It had like racing against time, conspiracy against the enemy, but the actual, the enemies were working with our side and it came down to the wire and masked assassins. It was good. It was so good. Oh, I hope the next generation can live up to this. And James Tiberius Kirk, we salute you. Okay, thanks guys.